I'm not even gonna lie, like I 10 10 recommend if you're a girl and you don't like how your breasts look, you want to get your breasts done, this video is for you. 100% get your boobies done, girl. Like, So today we're talking about my processing of getting my breast augmentation. This was a very requested video, so I'm finally about to give it to y'all. Like, I'm telling y'all everything that y'all been asking, everything y'all want to know. Um, the cost, how I went through um, the procedure, the medication I was on, who my doctor was. Like, I'm So I got a breast augmentation and I got mine done in Chicago, which is my home city. Um, I don't know why everybody thinks that you gotta go to Miami to get a breast augmentation. You don't. Like, you don't have to go to Columbia. You don't have to go out the country. You could literally go. You could find you a really good doctor within your city that will do your augmentation. You just have to do your research, y'all. Do your research. Do your research. Literally, that's all you have to do is your research. You have to find out multiple people that this doctor have done like you want to know how many years they've been in you want to make sure that they're a board certified surgeon you want to know you want to see real results like people of your skin complexion just because one person breasts look a certain way doesn't mean that yours will automatically look that way is it a slight chance it will yes is it a better chance with a better doctor? Yes, but it's just not, nothing is really promised. So just do your research. Like, I wanted to get my breasts done because after I had my son, I didn't breastfeed, but my breast was filled with milk and I didn't breastfeed. And when my breast went down, they was very flat looking. Like I already had like an A cup breast. My body is already very little, like I have very little legs and very little arms and stuff like that. So me just having a flat ass chest, I looked like a little kid. Like it was giving little girl, like my body, it was just giving little girl and I just wanted to look older. So boom, I had already had my son. I went and got my breast cons consultation. Um, and people be getting that, oh, like, you, um, you know what? I ain't even gonna get into it, child. I'm not even gonna get into it, but what I'm saying is, it's nothing that I got done to me that I wasn't already doing, that I wasn't already going to do. Like, I went to the doctor to get a consultation on... September 17th, 2020, okay? You call in for a consultation. The consultation is usually free. And you go in and two cycle breast um, implants that you can get. You can either choose the saline, which is like the water, water-based implant, or you can choose silicone, which is like silicone substance, and it's like called silicone gummy. Um, so you choose between those two and then at my specific doctor's office, he have a machine that he puts you in front of and it's like a simulator and you step inside, you, you're undressed from like the waist up and you step inside the simulator and it gives you a depiction of how your breast will look according to a certain CC, that's what it's called, a CC. So... If you tell the doctor, like, I want 350cc, he will show you on the simulator how it will look. He'll show you on a screen. Like, this is how big your breast will look if you get this size. And that's a perfect way for you to pick your size. Because a lot of times, people really don't know their size. They go off of other people's breasts and say, oh, I want this size, I want that size. Everybody's body is different. You have to pick your size based on your body weight and how your shoulders look, how, you know, your stomach and your chest and all of that. The doctor that I went to, he helped us with all of that. Like, he helped us proportionalize it and he helped us understand, like, the whole procedure we was going to go through. So, when I went through the simulator, 
he showed me like these are your breasts and one of your breasts is just a little bit smaller than the other and that's completely normal like as a woman nothing is uh, the same size as each other so that's just something that's completely normal especially when you have um, been pregnant before because your breast your body just doesn't go down to the right size identical like they're not symmetrical but I wanted my breasts to be symmetrical like I want them to be exactly look exactly like twins and I knew that I either wanted to do 350 or no bigger than 400 and that it from my understanding that is like a full c cup going into a d like that's like titties but it ain't like big as ever but it's like oh she got some breasts like it's breast so i'm like i should be good with that size um do not quote me on this please do your own research please 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 talk to a doctor like this is just me as an individual on what I felt like was better for my body okay so I in September I picked out saline um, and the reason why I chose saline was because from my understanding saline is a water substance implant granted I understood and the doctor clearly explained to me that one saline does not give an automatic natural breast look and two, saline does not feel as natural as um, the gummy bear silicone implant. Remember, it's two implants. Saline and it's silicone. The silicone gummy and the saline implant, which is like a water bag substance, um, which is a water-based substance in fact implant. I chose saline. One, I am Army and I... At any, you know, saying time, I can go through like rigorous activities. Like, it can impact my body in certain ways. Like whether we gotta climb up a rope, slide down a wall, whatever. My body can, you know, have some sort of impact. Um, and I was doing some research, and I saw that like one, both implants can burst. Okay, so I always keep that in mind. Do your research. I always keep that in mind that. These implants are not um, burst proof. These implants can burst. So I was thinking like, okay, well, if my implant was to burst while I was doing an activity, you know, for whatever reason, like in the army, whether I fall off something or whatever, my implant can burst. If I have a silicone implant, it will be silicone leaking into my body. If I have a saline implant, it will be saline, which is water-based substance, leaking into my body. Silicone is a foreign object. It is something that if it leak into your body, it, it could be potentially hazardous, dangerous, um, or whatever. If I do heart-based activities where I could potentially bust an implant, like... I lift weights, I do gym activities, stuff like that. And if anything leak into my body, I would rather it be saline and me have to get the, you know what I'm saying, implant removed versus me having silicone, a foreign object, leaking into my body. And I just know that it could become very deadly. So that was my personal choice to get saline instead of silicone do your research do what's best for you i'm not trying to convince nobody to get saline over silicone whatever um i went and got my surgery on january like the 14th i believe the 14th or the 7th so like the 14th um 2021 and it went well like when I, it was like he so when i went and i paid what day i paid I paid on, oh, okay, I paid on the 12th, so I paid on January 12th um, for my surgery, and I was quoted for my surgery, I was quoted 
$66.50 for my surgery. Like that's how much I was quoted for my breast. And because I recommended um, three people to him. So the doctor that I went to, he was like super cool. And everywhere I go, I always let people know like, hey, um, well, I, if I recommend somebody, I let them know like, hey, I recommended this many people to you. One thing that you could do, like if you and your friend, well, if you recommend your friend or something, to a, a doctor or a surgeon or something like that, ask for a discount. If you refer somebody, ask for a discount. Like, you need to be letting these doctors know, like, hey, I'm getting you business, so can I get a discount? Like, or can we, since we both booking with you, we'll book our we'll pay for our deposit, our final deposit, if you take our final job or something, something, get something, like, just ask, like, just say that, like, just ask, okay? Just ask, okay? Because after I asked, my initial surgery price was, um, so my, I told you what he, he quoted me for is 6650 And then me and my friend booked together, he took off 1700 y'all. This man took off 1700 for my surgery. But the only reason why he took that off is because I had three friends go to him and actually get their surgery done. So I had the one girl who I actually went with and then I had two other friends go to him and get surgery. And he was like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, yeah, he like, oh yeah, ring her up, get her the discount. Yeah, give me the discount, whatever. Like, give me, cause he was, he a good surgeon. So I didn't have to worry about like, oh, you get what you pay for. No, like this is actually a board certified surgeon. Like when I tell y'all the name of the surgeon, you gonna, oh yeah, he good. Like it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like. You got to be cautious of surgeons that's trying to give you a discount when they not board certified, they new to the game, they, you know what I'm saying, like, new. This is the OG. The surgeon I went to was the OG surgeon. Like, he's done this plenty of times. Like, I didn't have to worry about, like, oh, my best is going to come out looking bogus or lopsided or anything, or I'm paying a lower price, so my best is going to be looking bad. No, I didn't have to worry about that. Uh, total price for my surgery was... $4,950. So basically $5,000, you know. Um, so yeah, like that's basically the regular price. But you know, all the doctors and stuff had went up. So whatever. But I just still think that was a good price. It might be tricking me because basically I should be paying $5,000 because I literally probably everybody paid $5,000. But whatever. I was cool with that because initially, like I said, he quoted me $6,650 for him. So, yeah. Pre-op appointment, so they so you go and then you you um you confirm the size that you want. So I went and they confirmed like okay you're going to be getting 385 cc saline, and they confirmed and they gave me my prescriptions for um, the medication that they was giving me. Um, and then they gave me like all my surgery instructions and stuff like that. So they gave me, he gave me a prescription of for my medication. I got a pain medicine and I got a, a antibiotic. And the antibiotics is just to make sure that you don't get an infection after surgery. And I believe that was it. I don't, yeah. I was advised that I couldn't take aspirin and ibuprofen after surgery. So after your narcotics are all out because they only give you so many so after your narcos are out you ha you just gonna have to take like Tylenol for your pain medication because they don't give you a lot because the risk of you know people getting like hooked on the drug so after that you can only take like Tylenol for your pain um so yeah just know that you get all that and that's your pre-op this right before your surgery so this is one day before your surgery they it and it was during covid so i had to take a covid test early in the morning right before surgery so you have to take, i had to take a covid test right before surgery make sure i don't have covid or anything like that and then i go to the next building so after my after i get my covid test i go to my surgery building I, you know i met with the surgeon and they um he immediately came and saw me and asked me how am i feeling and everything i'm like i'm feeling good and he was just like okay cool and he came and he marked me up so he put the surgery lines on me with a marker as to like he put a symmetry line here and then he went under and showed me like this is where i'll be cutting at um this will be the top of your breast like so i won't go no higher than this here 
And he basically like just marked on my chest. After that, the nurse come in and she input an IV in you. Um, and they called me into the back and they started my surgery. Um, when you walk in the surgery room, it's pretty cold and it's really bright in there. Um, and you get on a table and the doctor, I think, I think that the doctors usually like always like try to like crack a little joke with you so that, you know, just to calm your anxiety or whatever. And then they come and they explain like, okay, you're about to get ready and go under anesthesia. And you know, when you wake up, you'll be complete. So I just remember, and then I woke up. When I woke up, I was in um, a recovery room and my chest was wrapped up of my chest and it was wrapped up. And when I woke up, I was just like feeling very tight. Like everything felt tight. I'm like, oh my God, I just got my breasts done. Like I'm like, oh my God, I just got a boob job, right? Um, and then when I woke up, the nurse was like, are you okay? And I was just so dramatic like about pain. So when I woke up, I was just like, no. And then she was like, do you want more pain medicine? And I was like, yes. So she went on and gave me, which probably was a narco, I believe. And she gave me a narco and then she was like, you know, you can call your friend and tell them to come pick you up. I'm like, all right, cool. Since I was at my hometown, I get to go home. That's perfect. So my friend Destiny had came and picked me up and took me back home. I was just walking real stiff. It just was like pressure. Like it just felt like pressure um, on my chest. But I felt okay. Like I wasn't doing bad. I felt okay. Like I just know that I wasn't supposed to be lifting anything. Um, and I wasn't supposed to be like raising my arms over my head. That was like really like some of the main instructions. So yeah, I didn't have nobody to watch Davon for me. So he was just at home with me. So I was at home and I just was taking my nar I think my sister came over, matter of fact. My sister came over and I think she kept Davon for like the first day. Um and I literally was off the narcos, y'all. Like the narcos make you feel so I don't it just make you feel very sleepy. So I was just like dozing off, you know, and waking back up and dozing off and waking back up. And the next day you go in for your for your post op appointment. So literally the, like literally the next day of your surgery, you go in for your um, post op appointment. And the doctor like examined and just made sure that they looked it good and he was just like, "Oh, they look good and stuff like that." Um, and that's when he helped me into my surgical bra. And I'll leave the link to um, where I purchased my surgical bras from because I still wear my surgical bras to this day. Um, and you're going to come back in six weeks. Do not take off this surgical bra unless you're getting in the shower. Do not remove your surgical tape. Let them fall off on their own. You know, eat a lot of protein. Try to eat as healthy as possible. No smoking, no alcohol. And the surgical bra is like really compressing. So it's a zipper right here. And they just feel really good. So I just wore my surgical bra every single day. Just like the doctor told me. I never took it off unless I was getting in the shower. And I put it back on immediately after that. Um, and I was good though. I was feeling really good. Like I'm not even going to go get your breast done. One... The, re the downtime is literally like, I would say like a week and a half. When I say literally seven days after my surgery, I was at a photo shoot. I was at a whole photo shoot seven days after my surgery. Granted, I wasn't like free and able to, you know, kick it, but I wasn't in that much pain. Like, it's not that much pain, literally. But also, I did not get a lift. So I just got a regular breast augmentation and my scars are under the breast. Literally in surgery for one hour. It was so quick. And I woke up, I had zero complications. My doctor was perfect. He, um, and yeah, so a couple of questions that people ask me about like aftercare and like surgery and stuff like that. A lot of people ask me, do I have filling in my nipple? 
no okay no so i still have yet and it's been i got my surgery on january the what january was like the 17th and now we're in 2022 and it's like november whatever like the 10th or the 11th um i still do not have filling in my breast which is 100 percent normal just understand it's normal it's not something that's abnormal everybody body is different i i got friends who do got filling in their breasts and then i got the ones who don't just like me so everybody body is different everybody body is going to react to things differently will my breast will i regain feeling back in my nipple yes like i will eventually but right now i don't like i i can feel my breast but i cannot i don't get the same nipple stimulation that i used to get you know oh um I know y'all probably gonna ask me like what was the pain level like um from one to ten. Honestly, my pain level probably was like a six, seven. It don't hurt that bad. It do not hurt that bad. I, because I really love my breasts, like I really like the way they look. I really like the work the doctor did. I think he did a hundred percent perfect job. So yeah. I'm like really happy about that. You is like the ultimate baddie when you got some cute breasts. I don't know, that's just me. Like I don't I've never gotten like lipo or like my butt done or anything like that. So I don't really know. I can't speak on other surgeries, but you can go to the gym and get, you know what I'm saying, and work your butt and work a flatter stomach, all that. If you don't have breasts, you just don't have breasts. It's very minimal exercise that you can do to gain actual breasts and if you want them to look a certain way. So that's just my take on it. Um, I, I got 385cc saline under the muscle. I believe so. I really don't know. It don't say on my paperwork. I really don't remember. That's probably the only thing I don't remember if I went over or under the muscle. I believe I went under though. Let's hope. So yeah, like yeah, and, just, and do your research about that. Like all, do your own research about what you wanna where you want to go so now it's time for my doctor reveal and i did not get a breast lift okay i got just an augmentation is dr michael horn i'm not sure if y'all can see that but this is the doctor dr michael horn this is an old school doctor okay like this isn't one of the new doctors just came out this doctor been doing surgery for over 15 plus years tell him i sent you Cause when it's time for me to get my implants out, I'm going back to him to renew my implants. Cause he did such a good job. And this for my Chicago girls, cause you know I got y'all back. Stop going to you don't gotta go to Miami to get your breasts done, bro. We got real good surgeons as far as breasts in Chicago. Now anything else, I don't know, cause I ain't never you know got nothing else done. But breasts in Chicago, stop playing. Breasts looking good. They looking real, real, real good. So, yeah. Alright, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe my channel. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know if y'all got any more questions about the breast augmentation. If you was contemplating on getting your breast done, thank me later. Go get your breast done. Stop paying. You a bitch. Stop paying.